Kavanaugh Bullock has just taken the podium and she is talking right now. Let's go right to her to hear what she has to say. Here We are leading in the polls and we have been leading the whole night with a current lead of just, yes, we have a current lead of just under 12,000 votes. We are cautiously optimistic, but we have to make sure all the votes are counted. But I know that we can agree that this has been a hard fought campaign. Running for office is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Boy, did I learn that one. Uh, and while we may have had our differences in this election, we all share the love for this city and this county. I know that the love for this place that we call home is something that you all share as well. It's why I stepped down from the appellate court to run for this job. This is truly the most beautiful city in the world. The skyline of this city takes my breath away each and every time I see it. I was born and raised here. I met my husband here. We raised our four children here. My family has been here for generations. There they are, they're waving. <laughs> my great grandmother was a baby in Chicago during the Great Chicago Fire. I got into this race because I did not want to give up on Chicago, and I know tonight that I can say that none of you want to give up on Chicago either, and that's why you're here. You know, there were a million reasons not to get into this race, and most people I talked to thought that this was really not something I should be doing. But I had a stubborn belief that I just couldn't shake. I believe that we could make our justice system work for everyone in every neighborhood, in every town across Cook County. I, that stubborn belief would have remained only a dream were it not for every single one of you. Because you shared my belief. You shared my vision for change. I found mothers and fathers in coffee shops and in dining rooms across our city. They were all worried about the crime that's debilitating our county right now. I found new friends. I met people in every part of Cook County and I drank way more coffee than was probably healthy. I learned that in every neighborhood, in every town in Cook County, people of every race, creed, religion, ideology, and orientation, we all want the same thing. We want a fair and effective justice system. We want a fair criminal justice system. We want illegal guns and assault weapons off of our streets. Yeah. We want less crime and safer communities, not by locking everybody up, but by turning people around. While we cannot declare a victory yet, I know that every single assistant state's attorney, past or present, knows that feeling of pride when they stand up in court and say, I am here on behalf of the people of the state of Illinois. The state's attorney's office has a noble mission, a mission to represent victims, a mission to uphold the law. Thank you for coming tonight, and thank you for your faith in me. We will be patient and we will let the democratic process play out, and we will build a safer, more just Cook County together. Thank you. Thank you. Listening to Eileen O'Neill Burke talk about not quite ready to count a victory, waiting for those votes to come in, but also quite confident in how her campaign was run. Uh, and where she's looking to go here in the next day or two. Talking about her love for the city, meeting her husband and having her children here at the city, talking about her goals, getting guns off the streets, addressing the root causes of the crime and rebuilding the state's attorney's office. Sarah Schulte has been live at the campaign headquarters for Eileen O'Neill Burke all evening. She joins us now with an update. Sarah. 
Well, Cheryl, you just heard Eileen O'Neill Burke, who said we have to be patient and we have to let the democratic process play out. She said she will not be declaring victory, not doing anything until all those votes are counted. Again, as we have been reporting earlier, there are a lot of those mail-in ballots in the city of Chicago that still need to be counted. She also said she certainly admits this was a very hard fought campaign. Now, O'Neill Burke ran as kind of the change candidate, the anti-Kim Fox candidate. Her supporters are moderate Democrats and also the business community, many who are here tonight and people who are just fed up with crime. Now, O'Neill Burke did something that was really almost unheard of in the uh, judicial community. She gave up her seat on the appellate court to run for state's, state's attorney. She has over 30 years of experience. She has been a prosecutor in the state's attorney's office. She's been a defense attorney. She's also been a circuit court judge and, of course, an appellate court judge. And she wants to bring all of that experience into the state's attorney's office if she wins. She says she wants to transform the second largest prosecutor's office in the, the country. Again, though, she said she will be patient and won't do and will wait until every single vote is counted. So obviously there's a very good chance this may not be uh, decided tonight. Back to you guys. OK, Sarah Schulte reporting for us. We appreciate it. Political reporter Craig Wall with Clayton Harris, the third's campaign. Craig, do we expect to hear from Mr. Harris, the third? We do expect to hear from him, and right now what you're hearing from supporters is cheers of support as they see that deficit continue to shrink, something it has been doing all night, hopes growing here as the night has gone on. Now Clayton Harris was posing for a picture with his wife and two sons earlier tonight. He's off in his side room by himself as he's watching these returns that have been getting more encouraging for him as the night goes on. The campaign and supporters watching the results. This was always expected to be a very close race, both sides admitting that. It's gotten tighter all night long. Harris is expected to come out and address supporters sometime tonight, perhaps waiting to see what O'Neill Burke was going to say. But his message is likely to be similar to what we just heard in that it is too close to call. Board of Elections estimates that of the 109,000 outstanding mail-in ballots, there still could be 70 to 80,000 that are likely to be returned in the next couple of days. There's have a total of two weeks to get those in if they were postmarked by today. Harris's supporters believe that the endorsement from the Cook County Democratic Party bodes well, and they believe they can count on getting a higher percentage of those mail-in ballots, but who knows where they're coming from. Earlier today, Harris talked about the campaign message that he was hoping would resonate with voters. We want people to know that we're intimately uh, familiar with both safety and justice, and we're focused on that. That has been my stump speech the whole time, is that we can do more than one thing at a time. We can be safe and just at the same time. So we hear and understand people that are worried about uh, the carjackings, the smash and grabs or whatnot, but we also understand that people are worried about, you know, the administration of justice. So we're focused on both. So with those votes shrinking now down to about 10,000, they were closer to 20,000 when the night first began. You can hear another cheer as more good news seems to come in for this campaign again. They have been cautiously optimistic and hopeful as the night goes on, and I sense that they are getting even more hopeful as things shrink. Again, we don't know when Clayton Harris may come out, but we do expect him to come out, and he's likely to tell people, similar to what we heard, too close to call. We're going to wait till all the votes get counted. That could mean several days. Watch breaking news on YouTube. Subscribe to ABC7 Chicago Eyewitness News.